Thanks for joining me. I'm Vicki Baird, and I am by label a professional coach and also intuitive and started my business through be giving intuitive readings and still offer that. And yet it takes on the form of being more connective and coaching. And this is my annoying cat, Leah. And I am talking to you today because I have had a request from new people in my life who are coming in as a result of the podcast. And they're asking, like, what's your path? What's your process? How did you get to where you are today? And I never find this all that interesting. So when a few people asked about it, you know, because I've lived it, so <laughs> when a few people asked, I figured, you know, this is a good thing. So if you're watching this on video, I am doing it for my living room because I figured if we're going to get to know each other, you should know what my couch looks like and the pictures behind my couch and my cat. The process of understanding my intuition and even knowing what it was, I know it started very young because I have memories of accessing it and I had a nickname as uh, know-it-all as a child and I didn't know why I knew things. Um, I thought it was common sense. I thought everybody had what I equate to be or describe as my movie screen, which is what shows up right behind my third eye, right behind my forehead. And it just gives additional data. And I thought that everybody had that. <laughs> so I would, you know, point out what I thought could have been different in our lives that didn't go over well. And, or I, you know, would say to my siblings that I knew where they had been, even if they didn't tell me. And I, you know, I just kind of brushed it off. I never thought of it as anything unique again, because I thought everybody had it. There was an experience when I was likely a teenager where I had um, encouraged my mom and, and had said to her that we needed to open up this wall in the closet because I felt like something was in there. And it did turn out to be that there was a box of love letters in there. And the the pull on it, the energy pull on it for me, I couldn't have even described. And even after that happened, I just brushed it off and said, see, told you something was in there. But if you've listened to the other episodes, you know that our family was not one where we discussed things. So that habit likely came very easily to me to be able to say, it's no big deal. Don't talk about it because nobody's going to talk about it anyway. So why even bother bringing it up? So I know this stuff almost retrospectively because it wasn't until I was in my very late twenties when I was 29, when my mom passed and I have joked, but I'm actually pretty certain she did this, that on her way out, there was a certain smack on the back of my head that said, go ahead and do that thing you did as a kid. And which was talking about spirits, which was talking about <laughs> the things in the wall and just knowing what was going on with other people. In addition to that, I was often referred to as being super sensitive, always crying, um, even when things weren't particularly rough, because we did have some patches where it was okay, even pretty good. So uh, I would cry at the drop of a hat, and which was fascinating to remember because later on in my life, I, I shut all of that down and I was like, I'm not showing any emotion. I'm not letting anything get in. This happens a lot to people who are empathic. And I think it happens to all of us. Uh, at, well, it can happen to all of us. It doesn't happen to all of us, but it can happen as a result of life experiences and all that. It was when I was around 29, when she passed, that going through that, but also having, she was the first person truly close to me who had passed in my life. So there was also not a heck of a lot of support there plus raising three kids. You know, it was a little busy time. But I really believe she smacked me on the back of the head and said, go do that thing you do. 
it opened up for me questions about the continuity of life. Now, my parents were ill most of my childhood, definitely all of my teen years and my 20s and stuff. They were both of them having significant health issues and in and out of the hospital. So I think that also became a norm and we didn't question. When I think back on it, I realize, wow, we did not question anything. And now I question everything. It's helped me out. With my mother's passing, I started questioning the continuity of life and you know, the realization that that could happen to anybody and including my own children, like that had never even occurred to me before. And I know that's because I have a level of trust at the soul level that I can't even explain. I've tried to put it in words and I just don't know that there's accurate adjectives to describe it. And I'm left wanting for a description of what that feels like. And again, something else that I didn't realize not everybody's walking around with. So I feel like that's part of my journey here is to help people connect that soul self with their human self. And so everybody, at least that I get to connect with and who wants to do the work, can have that feeling, that sense of surety that comes from it. So when she passes, I watched that movie very shortly after she passes, What Dreams May Come with Robin Williams. And it answered a lot of questions. I will preface this with the uh, suicide scene is not accurate for those on the other side, uh, at least not in my experience. That helped me to connect and to uh, have a little bit of information. And it also sent me on a journey of inquiry. And at the time, Hay House Radio had just come on. If you're not familiar with them, it's H-A-Y. And there were a lot of programs that we now call podcasts. And I was listening to those while working uh, in an (laughs) office and just studying. And, And there were shows on angels. There were shows on what is Um, I don't think they called it intuition, but what they, it it tended to go more in the direction of psychic abilities, which is the same thing. It's just at what level are are you using it? So there was this whole questioning of who I was. And I know that the majority of us as humans encounter that throughout our life. Who am I? What do I want? Um, You know, what's my What's my purpose? I hear that a lot. And it started this ball rolling. And then thankfully at the time, my my daughter was still young and I realized, wait a minute, I don't want her showing up at 30, 31 years old, questioning everything. I mean, she's going to question and she's going to have to find her own path, but I didn't want her to wonder that if she has a question, would I answer it? So I figured I better do some research. And along those same time, my one of my stepsons was having a difficult time with the mother he chose in this lifetime, his biological mother. And someone suggested he see an intuitive. And I didn't know what that was, but I wasn't going to send a kid by himself. So we went as well, his father and I. And while I was in session... <laughs> I remember her looking up over uh, our heads. And if anybody's had a session with me in person and now on video, that happens because that's where my movie screen is. That's where I'm looking to access what's not Vicky, but what is the information pertinent and relating to the person I'm speaking with. So when she got all done, I asked her about that. I asked her, doesn't everybody have a movie screen? And she said, no, (laughs) they don't. So that opened up even more for me. And I just started really, really studying and reading everything I could get my hands on while at the same time pushing it away. So I don't want to make it sound like I was like, oh, goody, this is something that is amazing and wonderful. And I'm just going to jump in with two feet. No, no, no. I pushed that away because on some level, having not had any discussion about any of this, 
nor any religious background, which I think serves me, but I also didn't have any frame of reference for, you know, a, a, a God energy, a, a source energy, deities, or I didn't have any of that. And I'm in retrospect, so grateful because it helped me to create my own understanding and my own belief systems while still taking into consideration other people's information, of course. So I started studying and I wasn't thrilled with it, but it did explain why my heart would feel like it was squeezing so hard if somebody was hurting or if I felt like someone was lying to me because I used to tell my kids, I can handle anything you throw at me. And I did, but don't lie to me. When you lie to me, I can feel it. I know it's off and then I lose respect and I don't want to lose respect. I will handle anything. Just shoot me the truth. They were kids. Of course, they didn't shoot me the truth, but at least it helped me strengthen my BS meter by raising <laughs> some children. So going through all of that process, I was so torn. And I bring this up because I see this in people too, but also in total transparency. When you see me now, I have 20 years of absorbing this. I have 20 years of the push-pull of develop more, open up more, learn more. And I don't freaking want that. Why would I even go there? Life is complicated enough. So please know if you're going through that experience that it's completely appropriate. It's, I think it's even part of the process because if you go in completely blinding faith, you may be led along by those that have less than stellar intentions. So as I'm learning this and I'm realizing and I'm understanding and taking classes about energy modalities and Reiki, and I had a couple family members that had already taken some courses so I could ask them. When I was doing that, I was looking for mentors and teachers. I felt like there's got to be someone that I can learn from. There's got to be someone who's already traversed this that can help me understand not only what it is, but who am I? What am I to do with it? Am I to do anything with it? Maybe it's just part of my own expansion. Maybe it's just part of what I've promised my soul I would learn. And I do believe that's true. I could not find teachers. <laughs> I tried. I even tried a few because I thought that it would, it would just move me along uh, exponentially. And the ones that I felt I could learn from, and of course I learned something, but not what I was intending or what I wanted to, not what I was intending. Every one of them, I tried three different ones in my rule of three. If it bounces on my head or through my head three times, I pay attention. But if something is not lining up after three tries, I let it go. And rule of three. So I tried three different people and every stinking one of them said to me that I had to develop my intuition and I had to learn how to balance chakras and to read energy and to communicate with my soul, my guides and source. And I had to do it their way. And I just knew it was wrong. I was like, that is not possible. We are all amazing individual beings. I cannot read, perceive energy the way you do because we all have different paths and journeys that got us to where we are. And we all have a different level of soul growth. So whatever I've gone through in previous lifetimes and learned, I've brought with me. And that doesn't mean that I'll read any you know, better. This isn't about pedestals or leveling up. It's just how does it happen for me may not be exactly how it happens for someone else. And I'm proud of that, that I stood my ground because even though it left me in a confused and lonely space, it also began my, I think, ethical journey in all of this. 
so that when I began teaching, I will preface it with, I cannot read the same way you read. You will not read the same way I read. We all have, we all perceive energy different. I can give you the tools. I can most certainly lead you to your abilities, but I can't do it for you. And no, nor should I, um, that's just taking power and that's not what I'm about. I want to share that and have everybody stand in their own. So as I'm going through this process of understanding, I'm also volunteering, working, marriage, raising kids, and all that entails, and just looking for some kind of balance in the world. And that's what energy, intuition, and my connection with my soul does for me. It gives me balance. And I believe that if there's sadness or depression or um, not clinical depression, but if there's a separation from our soul self, it creates a loneliness because we're, we're craving who we are. And that's what I was looking for. And it could be said that it, given how much energy I was giving out, that maybe I was just looking for self-care. Sure part of that, but mostly I would feel like I was looking for that knowing that all of our souls have, that we have abilities beyond our five senses. And that since it was the first sense in intuition, your first sense, that, that I should be paying attention to that. All of that is a way or my process through, I happen to be someone who asks a lot of questions in my head, not necessarily out loud, but I ask a lot, I research a lot, and I, I just want to know because I think curiosity is part of our soul too. And it's a lot of fun. As I'm working, I had some lovely ladies point out to me that I would often comment that if my head hurt, our boss was changing the business. And if my stomach hurt, somebody was getting fired. And I figured, wow, I'm a whiner. I am someone who's always complaining about my head or my stomach or, you know, and then my common sense head said, you need to look at this and see if it's something to take care of. But they had been keeping track. And it turned out that my track record was really accurate. And I'm so grateful to them, so grateful, because I don't think I would have thought to gather evidence. I don't think I would have challenged that, at least not at that point in my life. And because they did, because they were looking for the proof or some connecting fiber between the two, unbeknownst to me, it was like a not a complete double blind because they knew they were keeping track of it, but I was in an experiment I didn't know I was participating in. And I'm so grateful because it gave a validation even if I didn't know what to do with it. And then I decided I might want to start paying attention to this. So that meant direction in life or helping friends out. And that's how my business started. Because as I was talking about this to my friends and excited about it. I also learned about Oracle cards and someone had gifted me a package. Actually, it was my, one of my older sisters had gifted me a package and I left it on a shelf <laughs> for a couple years and then decided to get it down while on vacation and do some reading around it and then offered, you know, I have still friends to this day, a wonderful friend, Maureen, who was <laughs> completely open to being the guinea pig. And we've grown and learned so much together over the last 19 years, something like that, that I'm so grateful because again, like those other ladies, I had someone in my life validating back to me. And that's what I try to be for others too. Even if I won't tell you how you're wired, part of my role, I think, is to support in the confusion that happens when you start listening to your intuition, because it can at times feel like it's necessary to consult a mental health professional. And there have been times where I have not only questioned that, 
but I've actually consulted them. And uh, thankfully, <laughs> no one took me away. But in learning how to decipher and to synthesize all of this information that comes in for me, I had to figure out, and I think in due diligence had to ask if it wasn't something I was making up. And thankfully it's not. And as much as I have a very imaginative being, I'm very serious about what comes in from me through my intuitive sense and from spirit. So as I'm going through this and I have a friend and thankfully a supportive husband as well along the subject, even if he didn't want to necessarily do it, he was supportive of me studying it and questioning and all of that. So word got out that I was doing these card readings. So I did them free for a few years. I just thought it was fun. I didn't think of it as a business. And then it started expanding. And then people who weren't here started asking if I could do readings for them over the phone. And I thought, okay, that's safe. That's fun. And I would do, I would work all day and get the kids situated and then go upstairs and do some sessions. And it developed from there all the while trying to find balance in life. And I really want to express that there is no rush on any of this. So when you're developing your own and trying to understand, did I just hear guidance or am I making that up? Um, have I even asked myself that what I feel, what I know, um, do I have the energy or the time to do this? Please know that there's no race. There's no finish line. There's nothing that we are pushed to do or expected to do or should do or supposed to do. Hear all those guilt words? Those are all guilt words. Don't do that to yourself. Because as I went through my process, let me save you a couple of years. As I went through my process and I realized what was happening, I truly felt like, well, if I can do this, I should do this. And there were some times where I didn't freaking want to. I didn't want to know about other people's pain. I had enough going on in my life. Um, I didn't want to feel it or even process it, nor did I want to help people process it. But there was this push within me that said, yes, you do. <laughs> and I think it's that curiosity. I, I felt like if I can help and I have this wiring and at times it was very self-sabotaging and I just don't want other people to go through that. If you do, I guess that's you and that's your choice. But that's where learning how to process energy comes in handy because then you can become observational of it and not absorbent. I was bounty paper towels, the 12 pack with the quilted, you know, pretty designs on it. I absorbed everything and I thought I had to because again, I couldn't find the mentors, couldn't find the teachers. So fast forward, I'm doing readings. I quit my job, my full time paid the mortgage kind of job and jumped into doing this full time and worked all word of mouth. I didn't have, there wasn't public, there wasn't social media at the time. There was email list. I eventually got one of those together 10, 12 years into it, but it was all word of mouth. And I'm very proud of that. And I work, even though I have a social media presence and this podcast, word of mouth is still my most endearing connection. And that's why I'll never purchase an email list or do any of that. So all of you sending me that idea and stuff through LinkedIn, knock it off because um, I'm not going to do it. I want people there and here authentically or, or I wish you well. The whole time I'm doing this and expanding my own intuition, I had people around me supporting and yet it felt incredibly isolating and lonely. That is an aspect of developing intuition. And I want to be transparent and very clear about that, that there will be times where you feel 
a disconnect and maybe it's from a certain person, you know, maybe it's a group that you belong to, but you've outgrown and which I hope you celebrate yourself and give yourself a high five. Please know it's temporary. If you stay committed to what your growth is, if you know why are you developing it in the first place? If it is to hang a shingle out and to charge for sessions, I need you to reconsider that because I don't want your health being impacted by being out of alignment. And if your only intention is to develop so you can charge, you are out of alignment, my friend, and you need to step back and do a little soul searching and a little bit of conversation seeking inside. It's fine that you charge. I wouldn't have a business if I didn't charge. But that alignment has to be there. And if the motivation or the intention is to grow that list or to be on the stage or to do the readings in public and stuff, check that. You know, check that ego at the door, get back in there and do some work because we don't need any more people walking around exploiting other people's emotions for their sake. Can you tell that this is kind of a hot topic for me? <laughs> it takes commitment. It takes work. It takes reverence to develop your skill sets. Don't sell yourself out for a dollar, for a following, for the quote unquote notoriety that comes with it. I have been offered, um, at least in the development stage, to do shows, to do my own show, right? <laughs> and I said, I'm so boring. Like I do laundry, I vacuum, I don't do drama, I go for hikes, you know, I, I, I needle fell. Yeah, I meditate and yeah, I talk to energies that other people aren't necessarily seeing at the time in the grocery store, but it's not all the time. You know, this is something that's inherent in all of us. It should be there and as welcomed as much as, and as, as um, expected, as normal, as natural, as taking a breath. As I dig down and developing your intuition takes grit. You know, it takes integrity, I think. Um, and grit is in the word integrity. So combine the two. It takes wanting to commit to your own energy field before others. And most won't tell you this. Most people will say you do it to help others. You're empathic so you can help others. You have ability so you can help others. And I call bullshit on that because we are all here first and foremost for our soul's journey our soul's journey. Everybody is here for your individual soul's journey and learning. And it happens to travel around in a human experience that has other abilities. Not one of us came in altruistically. We didn't. We need to get that out of our heads. And then maybe that'll help us stop putting people on pedestals too. So with that understanding that I came in for my my soul's journey, it keeps me in integrity because I want to croak knowing that I did the best I could. I learned, I made mistakes, I screwed some stuff up, but I did the best I could on any, in any given day. And when you recognize that, okay, I am here for me, it will alleviate any desire to be self-centered, I feel. Because once you give yourself that permission and you realize, well, hot diggity, I am here for my soul's journey. Well, what would my soul like to do? What do we want to do together? How can we help? How can we be of service? Let's get it lined up. Let's do this thing, right? The process of knowing that was huge for me as my husband at the time was ill and passing. Um, three years before he passed, I saw it. I knew it. I knew it was coming. I didn't exactly know when. Um, he had a near-death experience, and I thought it was then um, because I saw that. I felt it as it was happening. And even though I had told him 
beforehand. If that happens, I want you to find the light. I want you to go to the light. I want you to feel like you can. You don't have to be here for us. And then while it was happening, I was sitting in the in the waiting room at the hospital and my daughter was with me. Our daughter was with me. And I made a face that she's familiar with and you'll meet her on a subsequent episode because I've asked her to come on and talk about how it was being my kid. I'm a little scared, but <laughs> hopefully it goes well. But, and I felt him go. I felt that energy pull out and he did crash and they had a hard time getting him back, but he did come back. And then he refused to talk about it for a year. And then a year later, he posted on Facebook, of all things, that a year ago, I had my near-death experience. Meanwhile, the whole time he'd been denying it. So that process of feeling him go, I will admit in that moment, my soul wanted him to go. Oh, it so wanted him to be at peace and not in pain and everything. My human self actually said to him, get your ass back in that body get your soul back in that body. We are not complete. Get your butt back here. That is an example of something, granted it's a big example, of something that happens that isn't all flowers and isn't this amazing to develop your intuition. There's some really hard stuff with this. And along the lines, there's a piece that comes with it that in knowing that, at least for me, that I know I'm eternal. I know that the Vicky Baird that's what I'm walking around in right now will be someone else in the next lifetime. I'm, I'm in no rush to get there, but I just know that and I'm okay with it. So as he's going through this process and then did okay for a few years, I shifted my business from doing intuitive readings to coaching because I, like I've said in a previous episode, I want everyone walking around with their own sense of power, their own sense of surety of themselves and a belief in who they are. And I believe that to be possible. And I felt like coaching was a way to get there without, you know, them, people coming in and me telling them how great they are and then they go and they don't feel that. So the ability to help people feel as great as I see them to be, oh, it's the best gift ever. It's the best gig ever too. And then through all this, I was teaching classes. I forgot about that. So I felt like I needed to be in and, and share whatever it is I know, all while knowing I don't know it all. My child self may have thought that, but my adult self knows differently. And I started teaching classes on how to develop this and how to feel your own energy field, how to connect with the guides, how to raise the vibration, and really how to do the not so glamorous everyday work of intuitive development. And that went really well. And I'll be doing more of that online. Um, I know I keep saying that, but there's only so many hours in the day and I'm working on this stuff. So I promise you it's coming. And at the same time, I was making a lot of, I was doing a lot of mediumship and connecting with those who have crossed. I still love the healing that that can bring. Admittedly, it's not where I find the most joy. And again, we need to be in alignment in anything that we're doing, no matter what we're offering as our skill set. I do believe that if we're not in truth, not only will business slow down, um, even close, it just doesn't feel good. So as Howard was passing, I, true confession here, <laughs> asked if it seemed smart for me to use his passing in a way to get out of the mediumship part of my life and focus solely on intuitive coaching and teaching. And in true Howard fashion, he said, I would be a damn fool not to use it. Well, it turns out, I think that was an intuitive hit anyway, because it was so painful to be sitting across from people connecting with their loved ones when I had just lost the love of my life. So it ended up being truth that I didn't want to do it. 
And maybe it was an intuitive hit ahead of time that I was calling business acumen or something, but it hurt. And it was debilitating to the point I called it widow's whale. I would like just cry in between sessions. And when I got home, because it just ripped that bandaid off over and over and over again, I needed time to heal. And this is the part I think that people miss in intuitive development and connecting with your soul and listening to that is it will likely bring about change. It might shift you. It might shift your career in such a different direction that you didn't even see coming because of the opportunities it opened or because of the, the new view you have on life. You know, maybe you've been in an industry where it was all cutthroat and it was all um, competitive and, and you start listening to your own soul self and you realize that doesn't feel good. I don't want to be there anymore and could completely shift and, and bring about a gift. So as you go through this process, I hope that you will embrace change as being a good thing and as being an example of expansion. I have a client right now, and I know people call it pivot. I don't really see it that way. I see it as pausing, taking in the information and deciding on a new trajectory. If necessary, maybe you just change up the focus of your job or your relationships. Through the process of therapy <laughs> and girlfriends and working out and learning to run and all of that kind of stuff, I shifted my own vibration to a point where visiting that astral realm where we go when we pass. It's also where you go when you sleep, but where we go when we pass, it's not comfortable to me anymore. And therefore, ooh, this was a hard one. Some of my accuracy has left. <laughs> and that is really hard for, um, I'm, a, I'm not a perfectionist, but I do demand a lot of myself in this realm. <laughs> And that was really hard to reckon with. And in all likelihood, a gift because it defragged some other space that I feel like it's much easier for me to see the people who are in front of me living in, in full, you know, flesh machines walking around. I can now see clearly your soul process where dipping down into that astral realm it just does not work for me anymore. And I still give visits. I still, if I'm doing a session and someone pops in, I'll give a message, but it's not the trajectory. And that's something that is difficult and is not made with little thought. It's made with a lot of thought and feeling and exploration. Anytime there's an expansion in somebody's business or career or relationship or life, and most especially for myself, I do consider the ramifications and I consider the soul process too. But if I'm not listening to my soul and doing the work that I want to do, am I really helping? So I will always be working on my intuitive abilities. Some new stuff is showing up all the time and I want to bring that to people and I want to encourage that I may be able to see and help you chart a course for your life because this is my soul's expression, but that doesn't mean I, I would say what your soul's expression is. That's up to you. I believe in working together because that's where the greatest joy is for me as well. <laughs> see, it's all about me. We all have an amazing light within us. I can see that light and I can help to increase that light with whomever I'm working with. And then this is in personal relationships too, by honoring who each person is. There's no magic wand in any of this. There is effort and there is intention and I hope heart in it. So whether you want to make tinctures, um, whether you want to use this in your law practice, 
because it helps you to guide people in their healing. Um, hey, whether you want to, I work for a couple corporations that I help them in their direction and to avoid big money mistakes and to hire good people. Maybe that's something that would be fun for you. I, however you develop your intuition, however you develop skills and ability, it's same as putting the time in for painting, you know, or for crafting or for being a surgeon. I mean, you have to put the time in and the effort in. And I wanted to kind of give an overall view of my journey without sugarcoating it because I realized by not sharing that too and, and sharing some of the bumps and bruises along the way, it makes it look like something that's so easy. And if you're finding it difficult or you're finding it lonely because nobody in your circle discusses these things, I don't want to do a disservice to people in saying and, and showing just the shiny side, although 99% of it is shiny now. <laughs> Uh, there is a 1% that can be tough. When I realize that someone I thought I could trust, I can't, um, all the human things, right? It still hits on those levels. So I want you to recognize that if you put some effort in, there might be some moments in the middle that are tough, like anything else worth, worth it, you work for it and you put the energy in. Um, it's not always being, it's not always easy being me. Sometimes the way humanity treats each other is incredibly painful to me and not because of what they're doing or how we're acting, but because I know the potential. And what's sad to me is so many not striving for that potential. It can be incredibly lonely. And it can be, there can be times where I feel like an absolute freak, truth be told. And then I remember my soul. And I remember that for whatever reason, I signed up to learn this, to know it, to teach it, to share it. Oh, it's just such a blessing. And those moments that are tough and that require some digging deep. They're just, it's just worth it. It's so worth it. Everyone has something amazing to offer. You all do. We have, by being you, by connecting your soul with your brain, with your heart, you've already offered something amazing. Um, hope to yourself. And then if you have it within you to share with others, that's great. It's most important that you realize that connection and that there's not comparison in that connection and that you strive to be wholly connected to self. Because even though I'm so honored to be asked about my journey, it's mine and yours is equally as amazing. And while I may think that all of this stuff is just natural because this is who I walk around in, I can't paint. I, I can sort of cook. But I feel like we all have amazing hearts. And if we connect with that and we connect with our soul and you give yourself permission to feel your value, that's the journey worth listening to, isn't it? Thank you for listening to mine. And I hope you'll enjoy the upcoming episodes when I have my daughter on and my granddaughter on later and maybe pull in some friends uh, because I'm kind of interested. I've not asked them what it's like to be my friend. <laughs> and, and I do have some very dynamic people in my life. So that could be fun. It could be revealing there's not really anything to run to the inquirer about with me. So that the good thing about total transparency is I'm not afraid of what anybody's going to say. If it's, if I wasn't at my best, I will likely take that accountability and responsibility. Thank you for sticking with me in this episode. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one.
Take care. Thank you for listening to Intuition, Your First Sense. As always, please like and subscribe to this podcast wherever you are listening to it. Leave a review and take a minute to share it with a friend. You can find me all across social media at, at Coach Vicki Baird, and you can book a virtual session with me from wherever you are in the world at vickibaird.com slash booking. That's V-I-C-K-I-B-A-I-R-D dot com slash booking. Thank you again and see you on the next episode.